What up, what up? It's Omarvis in the fucking Hemi. So today's topic is the 11 benefits of quitting alcohol. Alcohol numbs the brain. So when you quit alcohol, the communication between the neurons and neurotransmitters returns to normal functioning. So now when that happens, you're actually able to communicate better and articulate yourself better. Two, alcohol is a diuretic. It's literally poison. So your body tries to excrete that poison quickly as possible. But now what happens is that you become dehydrated. You know what I'm saying? And so it fucks with the collagen in your skin. You know what I'm saying? So your skin is dehydrated. Your collagen is not produced at normal rate. So that slows down. You know what I'm saying? Also, it's inflammatory. So that puffiness and bags underneath your eyes and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? It fucks with that as well. So now it's an inflammatory agent as well as all that collagen stuff. I just mentioned previously. Also, what it does is fucks the elasticity of your skin. Once you stop drinking, the collagen production will turn to normal levels. You know what I'm saying? The puffiness, the inflammation will decrease and you'll go back to being hydrated and looking younger again. Three, you'll save money. On average, the 4.5 million Americans that drink, they spend about $200,000 a day on alcohol. So you'll save some money. I suggest you take that money and you save it. Throw into some mutual funds or IRA, you know what I'm saying, invest in something, you know what I mean, it's better to own 1% of something than 0% of nothing, 4, social stability, when you're not drunk, you can really connect with somebody, not just on surface level, 5, you can lose weight, alcohol has a whole lot of empty calories, 6, a healthy heart, According to the CDC, about 610,000 people die of heart disease in the U.S. every year. That's one in every four deaths. Seven, new activities. I mean, when you typically what happens to people, you know, they constantly medicate themselves every day. So you go and drink your coffee every day. So you're medicating yourself. You know what I'm saying? You get to the weekend and then you drink yourself to death. You know what I'm saying? So now... What happens is that you're forced to have new activities and to look for new activities. So it's not just you going to the bar and going to drink. You might go ice skating. You might, you know what I'm saying, go roller skating. You might go to the gym more. You're looking for other things to do. Go to the movies a little bit more. Doing different shit. Not just going to the bars every every weekend, getting drunk just so you can cope with the stress of the week. And now just a little, another little tidbit is that, like I said previously, it fucks up your skin. It fucks up everything. You know, it dehydrates you. So now you have... What's happening is that now what you're doing is that you have the alcohol, which is a diuretic. You have the caffeine from the coffee, which is a diuretic. Now you're dehydrated. Now what happens is that you have vasoconstriction, constriction of the veins. You have inflammation from the alcohol and the caffeine. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty bad situation you're setting yourself up with. Now, and caffeine wasn't one of them. I'm just throwing it as an extra bonus so you can know what it is. Eight, a healthy liver. As of 2014, over 19,000 deaths in the U.S. were caused by an alcoholic liver disease. Nine, making amends. Famous support group Alcoholics Anonymous teaches recovering addicts through the 12-step program to take inventory and make amends for those who they've hurt while they were drunk. Self-explanatory. A lot of times people are assholes when they're drunk. (laughs) 10. No more troubled sleep. Several studies have shown that individuals who initially drink to sleep better but delve into abuse end up suffering severe cases of insomnia. Also, another thing is if you have sleep apnea, you know what I'm saying, or problems breathing and things of that nature, or you snore. It makes your snoring worse, which prevents you from going into REM sleep. Sleep apnea, it exacerbates that, you know? So, 
if you drink before you go to sleep, a lot of times, even though you might fall asleep because your brain is not functioning as well, you're not thinking about the stresses of the day, but your sleep is never going to be as high of quality as if you didn't. And you're not going to get into that REM sleep. So you might fall asleep quicker, but you're not going to get restful sleep. And that's the thing. 11. A focused perspective. A study in 2013 found that just two weeks of sobriety from chronic alcohol abuse can begin to reverse severe damage to the brain. Thank you for riding with me. On that note, if you fuck with me like I know you fuck with me, you know what to do. Hard work beats talent if talent don't work hard. When hard work meets talent, then you got greatness. Oh, Marvelous in the fucking Hemi.